Hello, this is the tutorial for the INCOSI ASEP exam. It covers Chapter 10, Specialty Engineering Activities, Section 10.2, Electromagnetic Compatibility. The whole idea here as a system engineer is to avoid system malfunctions due to electromagnetic interference. Uh, chapter 10, Section 10.2, Electromagnetic Compatibility. So electromagnetic radiation is a natural phenomena that occurs in the world. Um, some of it is a result of uh, natural causes such as the, uh, the sun. Others are the result of man-made systems such as radios and microwaves. So on the left you can see the list of electromagnetic radiation uh, from high frequency short wave, mostly natural causes, to the low frequency um, radio waves and microwaves that are man-made. The effect of all of the electromagnetic radiation is molecular rotation, vibration, plasma oscillation, and most importantly for electrical systems, electron excitation. And so what all of these things can do is they can uh, result in equipment uh, failing. Um, examples of this that system engineers have to worry about is the result of, uh, of solar flares, um, radio waves uh, that are generated by man-made systems, uh, lightning, and then also microwaves and other uh, equipment that generates these kind of electromagnetic uh, waves that can affect uh, systems. And an example on the right-hand side is that of a, of a pacemaker. The solution to um, all of these phenomena is to protect the equipment uh, with some, some shielding. So question number one, electromagnetic compatibility is a system engineering discipline concerned with the performance and operation of a system. Pick one answer. So if you picked uh, A, electromagnetic environment, uh, you got that, that correct. A system is considered to be electromagnetically compatible when pick one of the following. A, the system does not generate EM that causes other systems to malfunction. The system is not susceptible to malfunction due to EM generated by other systems. The system is not susceptible to malfunction due to EM generated by the natural environment. So the correct answer um, is F, A, B, and C. So importantly, um, when you're developing and deploying a system, you want to make sure that your system isn't impacted by electromagnetic radiation, but also to make sure that you don't generate enough radiation that affects uh, adjacent systems. The uh, process for achieving electromagnetic compatibility is a five-part process. Uh, the first part is to do um, what's called an E4A analysis. So electric, electromagnetic, environmental effects. There's your E4 analysis. Um, so once you've uh, evaluated your system and uh, its impact with regards to electric, electromagnetic radiation, step number two is to develop requirements in the form of standards and specifications. Then you go to number three, design and implement. You'll do some testing. And once you're satisfied with the results, uh, the system will be delivered for qualification purposes. So the, the um, standards for uh, EMC are, are in standard documents, no surprise. And one of the most common ones is the MIL standard 464C. So you would use that in establishing what the standards should be for the equipment in the E4A analysis. Uh, and then in developing the uh, specifications, you would use the MIL standard uh, 464. So as we said earlier, the design is associated with shielding, which you would put your equipment into. Um, so that would uh, take place during design and implementation and testing. And then finally, you would go to an EMC test chamber on the right-hand side uh, and, and verify that the system is in fact safe from the levels of, of e, uh, EM radiation that it was designed for. So to repeat um, the, the, the process, there's these five sub-processes. One is the E4A, two is requirements, uh, three is design and implementation, 
four is test, and then finally uh, the EMC qualification tests. So question, which sub-processes in the EMC process would an SE use an EMC test chamber? So pick two. Which sub-processes in the five processes would a system engineer use an EMC test chamber? So if you pick number four, EMC engineering tests and EMC qualification tests, you are correct. Next question, which sub-processes in the EMC process would a system engineer design and inspect and test an EMC shield? Pick two. So if you picked EMC design and implementation and EMC engineering tests, you are correct. Those are the, uh, um, the processes in which you would design uh, and test the EMC shield. Next question, which sub-processes in the EMC process would a system engineer use the mill standard 464C? Pick two. Good, so if you picked the E4A analysis and the EMC requirements uh, process, that is the place where the mill standard 464 uh, would be used. So one final note on electromagnetic compatibility. Um, many times when we're building massive systems, uh, it's not possible to put them in a test chamber. So the idea there is that you do testing, qualification testing on the individual parts, and then uh, sum those up to get the integrated um, EMC uh, compatibility for the overall system. So thank you for listening. I wish you all the best in your system engineering uh, endeavors, and let's work together to make the world a better place.